Hey YouTube, welcome back. And today we'll talk about versioning to solve inconsistency in replicas. So first let's talk about what the problem and what how the problem happens and what are versioning and how to solve it. And yeah, so um, let's say that we have this distributed system. We have two replicas and we have the servers trying to and, and the, in the replica, each replica has, um, has a name called John. And we uh, replicated each, uh, we replicate the data to make sure that um, we have consistency. So server one and server two will read the same data. So server one get name, it will get John. Server two and get name, it will get John. So everything looks good, everything looks fine. However, we could find, go through a problem when server one and server two try to m edit the name John in the same time. So server one tried to add to John Munich or John München. If you are from Germany, like shout out to my German fellows. Um, and um, so it will be equals uh, job Mun uh, John Munich and uh, or John München. Um, we have server two uh, called name John Berlin and it will add John Berlin. However, we have right now conflicts because name it's equal to John Munich in, 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 in one and and uh, and name is equal to John Berlin in N2. So when we try to make replicas, it it will we find some conflicts, and this lead could lead us to a problem. So how we can solve this one? So we can use versioning. So versioning is a common technique used in distributed systems to help resolve data in consist in, in in consistency among replicas. It allows the system to keep track of different versions of data items and determine which version is most up-to-date or the most relevant at the given time. This helps maintain data consistency, especially in scenarios where concurrent updates or network delays can lead to conflict uh, changes. So we can use versioning with some something we call a vector, um, vector clock. So basically, um, um, versioning and vector clock together solve this problem. So versioning and vector clocks are two techniques used in distributed systems to address data inconsistency among replicas. By tracking the order of updates, both methods helps determine the casual relationship between events or updates. So how, how it will happen? So first of all, what is a vector clock? A vector clock is a... Uh, as you can see here is uh, 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 a server and version pair associated with a data item. It can be used to check if one version precedes, succeeds, or conflicts with others. So let's assume a vector clock is represented by this way, D1, S1, uh, SA, SX, and the version of it, and D2, S2, and the version of it. So where D is data, uh, item um, and the V is is the version counter and S is a server number so D is data S is a server number and, uh, and uh, one is the version the version of, of this data so um, let's try to look at this one here so first we have a client will write item D1 to the system and write it uh, and the write is handled by the server sx okay which now has the vector clock is d1 x1 x and 1 and after that another client reads um let's say uh, another client reads or writes the latest d1 updates uh and uh, and uh, it and it, it to d2 and writes it back D2 descends from D1, so it's overwrite because D D2 right now it's 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 handled by SX as well, so it's uh, it will be um, it will be overwrite. D1 assumes the write is handled by the same server SX, which now has vector clock is of D2, SX, and version two. After that, we have we have another client reads the latest D2. And updates it to D3 and writes it back. Assume the write is handled by SY, okay, and which now has a vector clock of the S, like uh, D3, it was edited by um, SX in the version 2, and right now we created SY in the version 1. And another client reads 
D2. And um, uh, another client leads D2, update it to D4, because we have D3 already, and write it back, assume the write handled by server SZ, which now has D4, SX2, and SZ1. When another client reads D3, uh, uh, D3 and D4, it discovers a conflict which caused by data item D2 being modified by both SY and S, uh, SZ. The conflict is resolved by the client and updated data is sent to the server. Assume the write is handled by SX, which now has uh, D5, oh, for, sorry, it should be the version 3 right now, which have now D5, SX3, SY1, and SZ1. We will explain right now how to detect the conflict shortly. So, using vector block, it's easy to tell what a version X is an ancestor, uh, we have no conflicts, of the version Y. If the version counters for each uh, uh, participant in the vector block of Y is greater than or equal to the ones in version X, so let's give example right now, as you can see, if we have, um, let, me, let me copy this one, and have T here, so if we have the D will be is zero, for example, and it will be one, and is one, it will be one, version one as well. So the vector clock, this vector clock is an ancestor, is an ancestor, is an ancestor of, let me, it will be an ancestor, oh, no, no, go back. It will be an ancestor of S01 and S12. Okay, therefore, no conflict is recorded. As you can see, this one is ancestor of this one. Similarly, you can tell that version X is sibling or a conflict, a conflict exists of Y if there is any participant in Y's vector clock who's, who has a counter that is less than its corresponding counter in X. For example, for example, if we have D is, uh, let's say the S0 and S12, this one, and for example, we have, let's add another example here. So it will be S02 um, um, S and we have S11. So there is a conflict here. So even though vector clocks can resolve conflicts, there are two notable downsides. First, the vector clocks are in complexity to the client because it needs to implement the conflict resolutions logic and actually it's quite conflict. It's, it's not easy to, to understand it. Second, the server version pairs in the vector clock could grow rapidly to fix this problem. We set a threshold for the length and if they exceeded the limits, the oldest pairs are removed. This can lead to inefficiencies in uh, reco uh, recon reconciliations because the decent uh, relationship cannot be determined uh, accurately. However, based on like Dynamo uh, DB paper, Amazon has not yet encountered this problem in production. Therefore, it's uh, probably an uh, equitable solution for most uh, problems. So. We use right now the vector clock to detect, to make sure that we have no conflicts and we try to detect each server and it which is version. So no data is lost and there is no, 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 no conflicts have, have been uh, find. And when we find any conflicts, it will be resolved by the clients. So in, in, in order to talk about, about, about that, uh, so vector clocks, the, it, it, um, it, it adds some complexity and overhead and consistency guarantees. So 
in complexity vector clocks can be more complex to manage than simple version numbers and their implement may require careful consideration overhead uh, both versions and, and vector they work together and uh, add overhead to data management and storage due to the need of maintain additional data metadata uh, consistency guarantee uh, so the choice of between versioning and vector clock as well as the specific conflict resolution strategy used is used can impact the consistency guarantees provided by the distributed system so um, versioning and vector clock depends on the specific requirements of the distributed system including the desired consistency model and the complexity of the data interaction uh, these techniques are uh, valuable for addressing data inconsistency challenges in distributed systems but should be applied uh, thoughtfully based on the use cases and the system uh, characteristics so uh, that's it for this video and i hope you like my content if you like my content make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will never miss a video and see you guys in future problem